you know, it's, it's like, it's generational trauma. <laughs> Our parents came to the U.S. to give us a better life. And then we spend our lives with the pressure to honor their sacrifices. Music became my sanctuary. Well, congratulations on your film. Uh, it's so relatable. Every person who has, uh, who's first generation um, Latino American will understand this movie, like totally get it. And this documentary really captures that essence of what it means to be uh, a Latina in America, especially when you have, not just having to worry about your own self, but you have to worry about the weight of, your, of the family on your shoulders. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that was very much Isabel's goal um, and why I feel like she found a story here, you know, where it's, it's a it's a universal theme it's something that i think especially first generation kids only can really understand each other you know it, it's so niche and specific to like you know i think of like like i just talked about this when i think about like the edward james almost quote and you know you're not mexican enough for the mexicans you're not american enough for the americans it's exhausting and it's like we only really understand each other in that process and it's not even just that but it's like you know the um, the weight that you carry um to honor your parents sacrifices um to and at the same time kind of chase your dreams and so i think like isla can speak more into that as to why she really wanted to like lift the veil on that like really like complex like experience it is to be a kid of immigrants in the states yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think we, in some ways, like, it's one of the things that Doris and I really initially connected on, which is conversations about, like, oh, what what does this pressure look like? What does it feel? I think it manifests differently for everybody, but I do think that as children of immigrants or, immig or as immigrants, you, like, you sacrifice so much to create opportunity, either for yourself or for your children or for your family. And you are, you are basically, you create opportunity, but the cost of that opportunity is a great sense of responsibility. And, um, and we carry that responsibility with us. And sometimes it's just, you know, the weight of it just sometimes piles up to the point of it feeling overwhelming. I think, um, I think that it, it's a, you know, like Doris said, I think a lot of us, and like you said, I think, you know, first generation, you know, viewers are going to really personally connect to this. I also think it's kind of also like a universal feeling as well, you know, like honoring your parents' sacrifices, your family sacrifices, your lineage, and just kind of making sure that the opportunities that are created for you are not squandered. And so that was like a big, that was a big part of my life and my experience. Um, and I think it's something that we explore in this film. We really dive into it. Yeah, it reminded me of my mom's favorite phrase when we were, we were growing up. It's like, trabajamos como burros para que ustedes no tengan que trabajar como burros. <laughs> Watching the movie, I was like, oh my God, that's my mom saying, especially with Jax, whose mom, uh, Doris, your mom is very, under, your parents are very understanding, but her is like, you know, what are you doing with your life? Like, you're wasting your time doing music. Well, but I, and, and I also, I mean, as someone who can relate so personally to that conversation, like, I think that there's also, you know, I think that they're both expressions of love. They just kind of manifest in different ways. Like, I think that, um, it, you know, I, I, I think that like in some ways, like, you know, when your parents fight so hard for this opportunity and they give it to you, like it comes from a place of love to make sure that you're not, you know, that, that you're really focused on being able to like take advantage of that opportunity. That's why it's so complicated, you know, like from, wanting to honor your parents sacrifices and see how hard they work mm -hmm. uh, wanting to do what what your soul calls you to do too you know like I think it's like um like you feel pressure from all sides you know from the people who who think poorly of us to our families who want the best for us and, but you know it's it's like it's generational trauma <laughs> And um, Isabel, when you started out, um, Doris was managing Cuco and then, he, you know, something happened and you guys uh, broke apart. So, I mean, that's kind of the drama you're looking for, right? But you didn't plan for it. So when that happened, 
you know, what was, I mean, how did you start out? Like, what were you going to do? And then how did that change um, the direction um, when that happened? I mean, when the film started, I just, you know, the idea was to look at Doris as a manager, um, kind of working with a series of artists. And I think when the pandemic hit, it was just, it was a real moment of like, I mean, at Doris, again, I don't want to put like words in your mouth, but it felt very existential. Like, what are we, and I think that was true of everybody. Like, what am I doing? Um, why am I doing it? And so, you know, I think beyond the component of Kuko, like it, it was more just like about how the music industry was just totally shifting. Like to me, the biggest kind of plot twist was just that like the music doc that I expected to make that I watched hundreds of film, you know, music docs to reference, they were no longer, it was no longer gonna be that, you know, it was gonna have to be something very different. Um, and I think that I just had like a real, sh I had a really strong belief and conviction that like, I at that point knew Doris's personality and knew that she was gonna figure something out. I also knew that like, um, you know, the story of her fam of Doris supporting her family and her, her family waiting to hear about their papers, that, that hadn't stopped. And so um, that was really always kind of the main focus going into the film. Um, and then it evolved into something really beautiful and Doris met Jacks and it, you know, the, the, the plot shifted in a way that I had never expected. Yeah, the plot with the, or the story with your parents, Doris um, getting their paper. Oh my God, it was so emotional. Even thinking about it right now, I was like, oh. you know, because, you know, I, I grew up in an immigrant community and, you know, the trauma of the stress of, you know, thinking that you're going to be deported from you, you're on your ass, from your uh, perspective, your parents being deported, your brother was deported. I mean, having to live with that fear their whole life, it's like, oh my God, that's just so heavy on your heart, you know? Yeah, I think that's something that I always wanted to feel understood on growing up, but I couldn't necessarily share that experience out of fear of what people would think about um, my family's immigration status, um, especially because I knew I had the privilege of, of having an unwavering place here in this country, yet one traffic stop could mean my parents could, mean, could be deported, you know? So it, it's something that like, um, I couldn't necessarily find community in growing up because something that you don't necessarily speak about. And not only did my parents finally get to feel that relief, but like I, as a daughter, finally get to, got to feel that relief too. That was a beautiful moment. Well, very well captured. And then finally, Doris, when people watch this, they're all going to start sending your mixtapes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Huh? Are, you look, are you looking for talent? Because I don't know what you ask. No, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, that, that film was a time capsule uh, of my heydays as a manager, pivoting into like mentorship and really like, you know, Isabel did, didn't really go into the details of that in the film, but like I closed my company, you know, like um, I, I knew like when I found Jax, it was just, it's something that reminded me of why I wanted to do this in the first place. And I felt very inspired and um, I saw all the potential in her, you know, and I knew that I just wanted to help um, in opening doors for her to find her way in. But that was really like the transition for me to then step into my own artistry and like all that. So, you know, best of luck to, to all folks who want to enter the music industry so that way they can uplift those artists that want to grow in the industry as well too you know and um we, we deserve more of us uh, taking space you know in these places agreed